I co-founded a software startup in December. Each month, I send out an update to our investors to keep them updated on our progress. But the past month was a bit different, our industry, retail, is going through a transformation. Instead of just writing about our internal news, I wrote about the impending apocalypse in the broader world of retail. More specifically, I included some thoughts on Amazon and why their commanding lead is only going to get larger. Amazon is the most impressive company on earth, and I think it is one of the least understood. A few people suggested that I post this publicly, so here goes. My first company, an auto parts manufacturer, sold to Amazon both as a vendor, where Amazon issues purchase orders for bulk product, and as a marketplace seller, where Amazon takes a cut of a third-party seller's products sold on Amazon.com, so I have some insight into Amazon's internal operations and initiatives that aren't often publicly discussed. I've followed AWS and Amazon's other various offerings for some time as well, and Amazon as a company has become something of a personal obsession of mine. I have some further thoughts on Amazon and the impending retail apocalypse that I wanted to share for those who are interested in the overall future of retail. Consensus is that we've hit a tipping point and the retail industry is finally seeing some major collateral damage from Amazon's monster growth, and mainstream, non-tech news has started giving this a lot of coverage. There is a lot of discussion about whether Amazon's advantage is sustainable or whether other retailers, namely, Walmart, will be able to mitigate Amazon's dominance as they start to replicate Amazon's model. Most of the analyses I read focus on Amazon's broad advantages, what I'll call bullet point mode stash and then evaluate whether each program is replicable by a competing retailer like Walmart. The programs are well known by most in the tech world and examples include Amazon Prime 2 Day, or 1 Hour, Delivery, Amazon Marketplace where third-party sellers can sell items alongside Amazon's own listing, Amazon Go stores, Amazon's physical, cashier-free retail locations, and Amazon's drone program. The truth is that each of these is feasible for a large competitor to replicate and it's reasonable to think that Walmart could build or acquire these capabilities within the next few years. The key component to profitable two-day, or one-hour, delivery is the customer's proximity to a distribution center. Walmart already has 150 plus distribution centers, considerably more aggregate square footage than Amazon's fulfillment centers, though they are optimized for restocking their 11,500 stores via Walmart's network of 6,000 plus trucks. Walmart has a proven ability to build out distribution capacity and they should be able to manage reconfiguring their network for e-commerce fulfillment without too much difficulty. And while Amazon is building out the full gamut of critical last-mile delivery solutions, drones, delivery robots, and an on-demand human delivery network called Amazon Flex, there are plenty of third-party startups in each of these areas that could provide Walmart a reasonable degree of parity. This all said, I believe that Amazon is the most defensible company on earth and we haven't even begun to grasp the scale of its dominance over competitors. Amazon's lead will only grow over the coming decade and I don't think there is much that any other retailer can do to stop it. The reason isn't the bullet point moats that are talked about in headlines, and it isn't the culture of innovation or Bezos's vision as CEO, though I do think Amazon's culture is incredible and Bezos is the most impressive CEO out there. It's the fact that each piece of Amazon is being built with a service-oriented architecture, and Amazon using that architecture to successively turn every single piece of the company into a separate platform and thus opening each piece to outside competition. I remember reading about the common pitfalls of vertically integrated companies when I was in school. While there are usually some compelling cost savings to be had from vertical integration, either through insourcing services or acquiring suppliers slash customers, the increased margins typically evaporate over time as the supplier gets complacent with a captive, internal customer. There are great examples of this in the automotive industry, 
where automakers have gone through alternating periods of supplier acquisitions and subsequent divestitures as component costs skyrocketed. Divisions get fat and inefficient without external competition. Attempts to mitigate this through competitive, external bid comparison, detailed cost accountings, and quotas usually just lead to increased bureaucracy with little effect on actual cost structure. The most obvious example of Amazon's so structure is Amazon Web Services. Steve Yeg wrote a great rant about the beginnings of this back in 2011. Because of the timing of Amazon's unparalleled scaling, hypergrowth in the early 2000s, before enterprise classes was widely available, Amazon had to build their own technology infrastructure. The financial genius of turning this infrastructure into an external product, AWS, has been well covered, the windfalls have been enormous, to the tune of a $14 billion annual run rate. But the revenue bonanza is a footnote compared to the overlooked organizational insight that Amazon discovered, by carving out an operational piece of the company as a platform, they could future-proof the company against inefficiency and technological stagnation.